For the recent OpenToons collaboration, we had to animate a run cycle in front of a scrolling background. And part of the background I drew in Critter instead of OpenToons, to see how easy it was to combine them both. And it was. And this meant I could use all of Critter's features, but still animate in OpenToons. So that's what we'll look at today. <laughs> Hello friends, and welcome to a look at how you can use the power of painting in Critter with the power of animation in OpenToons. And as always, if you're new here, my name is Darren, and on this channel I have OpenToons tutorials, news videos, collaborations, and animations. So subscribe to not miss them, and hit that bell to be notified when I release a new video. And if you're interested in animating with OpenToons, check out the other videos on my channel, including plenty of beginner videos. And as always, as this video is quite long, I've got links in the description to each section so you can skip to the parts you want to see. So continuing today with my series of tutorials covering areas of open tunes that I use for the collaboration, I wanted to take a look at Critter. It's a free drawing and animation program, but I know a lot of you out there use its advanced drawing features. So it'd be good to be able to make use of them in your animations, which is why I thought I'd take a look at it. And I've got a special message from another OpenToons animator, Sebastian from Noble Frugal Studios, a little later in the video, detailing how he uses Critter with OpenToons, so stay tuned for that. Now I'm not an expert with Critter by any means, but I'm starting to pick up some of its features, like using multiple layers to separate your drawing, and applying effects to separate layers to add shadows or glows. And you can do some of this in OpenToons, but it can be a little tricky, adding extra levels in columns and applying effects to each one of them especially for newbies to OpenToons. But if you already know Critter, why not leverage your knowledge of that application? So there's two main ways to combine Critter and OpenToons, and the easiest way to use a Critter drawing in OpenToons is to simply create your drawing in Critter, as I did here for part of the background for this year's Halloween image that you may have seen last week, making full use of its layers and drawing features. So make sure that you save it as a Critter file first, so that you can go back and edit it in Critter with all the original layers if you need to. And then export it out to PNG, which flattens the layers into one drawing, using the export option. And of course you could just use the save as and select a PNG, but I find it better to separate the two processes. Otherwise I forget to save the Critter file version, and I just end up with a PNG drawing and no Critter file that I can go back and edit. So I find it easier to just hit save while I'm adding to the drawing, and the Critter file is saved out, and then when I'm ready to share it, I use export and the previous settings are there. And don't forget that what you see on screen is what's exported. So if you choose to hide some layers and export to different files, so for instance, hiding the moon, and exporting that as one file, and then exporting the moon on its own to a different file. And this means you can add them as separate columns and open tunes, so you can apply different effects or animation movements to different parts of your drawing. So, once it's exported, you just drag the PNG file into OpenToons, and it'll ask you if you want to import or load the drawing. And if you choose to load it, it'll just load the image from this location, so that if you export it again to the same location and reload the OpenToons scene, it'll use the newer drawing, which is really handy. But if you choose to import it, OpenToons will take a copy and place it in the Extras folder in your Project folder, which makes it easier to share being part of the OpenToons project and will ensure that it won't be copied over by a critter the next time you export it, so you can choose when to update it, just by copying the file from where you export it from critter into this extras folder. So it depends if you want the ease to export from critter and have the file always ready to use, or if you want to manually copy it to the OpenToons project. The choice is yours. And now the image is in OpenToons, you can create a new level and animate directly in front of that background. So the other way to work with critter is to start with a standard raster level in OpenToons and sketch out the basic layout of the background. Make a note of any features you need in your animation like doorways, windows, whatever, and making sure any props are to scale with your animation. Then choose Save All, which saves the scene file and all of your drawings, with the raster level saving as a TIFF drawing. And you'll find them in your Project Folders Extras folder. And it's named after the level name and with the drawing number. So open in Critter, Immediately save it as a Critter file, and export it as the same file name. And then that's all your file management taken care of. 
So that's a couple of suggestions of how you can get your critter images into OpenTunes. But how can you use them? Well that's exactly what Sebastian from Noble Frugal Studios has been doing for his new animation short, Castle Dark. If you haven't already, you should take a look at his channel and follow his progress as he works on his animation in OpenTunes and using Critter. But here he is with some tips about how he uses these two free apps together. Hello everybody, I'm Sebastian from the channel called Noble Frugal Studio. How are you guys? If you guys didn't know, I'm making a short film called Castle Dark that's being animated entirely in OpenTunes and edited with free software. Thanks Dan T for giving me the time to chip in on this video because I have a lot to say about using Krita and OpenTunes together because Krita is the main software I use for making my backgrounds for my short film. And I import those backgrounds into OpenTunes to animate over them. I would definitely agree with Darren when he says to make a sketch in OpenTunes and then import it into Krita because you wanna get your ideas out first with your animated characters in OpenTunes so that when you import it to Krita, you know exactly where to place certain things, what the perspective is, and etc etc after you've done your basic sketch in OpenTunes you move into Krita with upload the basic sketch by exporting it from OpenTunes and then you can get started on your drawing and painting and all that nonsense. Krita has a lot of perspective tools that I use personally simply because they're so useful in getting things right. So you can see me using those in this time lapse because they're so useful to get things just right. So after you've finished your painting, you can also think about some other things you can do before you go back to OpenTunes. Krita isn't just used for background paintings. You can animate in Krita as well if you want to make certain assets like you can make a snow overlay in a credit and then import it into OpenTunes. I personally don't use Krita for animating because I don't really know how to, but I would use it for mainly backgrounds and foreground elements. Say if I wanted um, a cool scrolling effect, I could make a bush in Krita, make the background transparent, and then I can import that at itself into OpenTunes so I can then animate it. It's a lot of cool things that you can do with Krita and OpenTunes working together. But really, after you finish your painting, you can just take it, export it from Krita, and drop it right into OpenTunes. Then you can proceed to animate right over it, so it's really that easy. With these two softwares, which are completely free, you can get some really, really professional results, which I've definitely gotten in my production of Castle Dark. I think that's all I have to say, so thanks, Darren T, and I'll hand the mic back to you. Thanks, Sebastian. So you see, it's really easy to use Krita with OpenTunes, to paint complex backgrounds and assets. Why not give it a go and see for yourself how easy it is and see if it could benefit you. I bet it will. And that's a guarantee.